Number seven, Texas now travels to Ames, Iowa. This will be Saturday night, 8 o'clock Eastern time on Fox. Texas clinches a spot in the Big 12 title game with the win and losses by at least two of the following three, Kansas State, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. We'll get into the Big 12 tiebreaker scenario in just a minute, but just know Texas wins, they're in. Should be in pretty good shape. All right, Iowa State has won four of their last five after starting the season two and three. So things have started to kind of roll in the right direction. And if you look at how they've fared in the past, they've done a pretty decent job against Texas in the past. Now, the Longhorns, they've lost three of the last four against Iowa State and Ames, but they are a heavy favorite here in this one. Iowa State also has a path to the Big 12 title game. They'd have to win out, have Oklahoma lose once. All right. They also have probably the most difficult two-game stretch amongst all the contenders to finish up. Texas at their place, and they're on the road at K-State next week. So it's unlikely that Iowa State finds a way, but if they can pull this one off like they have in the past, then maybe they have a chance. I think a lot of this is going to have to do with the start. And I know that sounds probably counterintuitive, <laughs> given how Texas has played in the second half of football games in multiple occasions this year. Houston game, big lead. Houston came back. Kansas State game, big lead. They came back. We saw it last week against TCU. Huge lead. TCU scores 24th quarter points. Next thing you know, it's a ball game. But if you look at how things have gone for Iowa State in Beck's 10 starts, all right, Rocco Beck's the starting quarterback, it's been really important that the Cyclones start fast. Iowa State is 4 0 this season when they score first and 1 4 when the opponent scores first. They're also 5 0 when leading at halftime and winless when they're tied or trailing at the half. So we know Texas is a great first half football team. We've seen that for a long time, dating back to when Sark took over the job in 21. I can think in 21 and end in 22, how many different times they had a first half lead only to let things slip away in the second half. Well, that's continued this year, but they've made the play at the end to flip momentum back in their favor and ultimately steal the game. But either way, I think it's going to be imperative for Iowa State to come out of the gates in a fast, fast manner and put some of the pressure and to get involved the home field, put some of the pressure on the Longhorn sideline. Another thing that's going to be really important for Iowa State if they want to pull the upset, they have to do a great job protecting Beck. They've allowed just nine sacks this year, so that has not been a significant issue for them. But if you look at Texas's defensive line, this will be the best defensive line Iowa State's faced. With all due respect to Iowa, who is an excellent defensive group top to bottom, I think Texas has more game records along the front than Iowa does, at least at the moment. More in sheer quantity. Texas has a bunch of guys up front. They're going to play a really long time in the NFL. So I think it's going to be really difficult for Iowa State to protect as well as they have, but they're going to have to. If they don't, it's going to be tough. Take advantage of what I think is the weakness of the Texas football team. It's their secondary. Texas is number 12 in the Big 12 and 106th in the country in pass defense. They're giving up about 250 a game through the year. Now, a lot of those uh, yards might, according to people that follow the team, a lot of those yards might come in garbage time. But I, I don't look at it that way because a lot of the games were garbage time for a moment and then it wasn't garbage time anymore because the game got tight. But here's a few of the quarterbacks that have played well in the last four weeks against Texas. Josh Hoover for TCU. He was 24 of 36 for 302, two touchdowns and a pick. Kansas State's Will Howard was 26 of 41 for 327, four touchdowns and one interception. Then Houston's Donovan Smith was 32 of 46 for 378, three to one touchdown to interception ratio. Well, in comes Rocco Becht. I think it's an underrated offense, and Beck's done a pretty good job this year. 15 to 7 touchdown and interception, and has been pretty solid as far as his decision making is concerned. He's going to have to play the best game of his career. I look at the Iowa State wide receivers, I think they're fine. I think they're fine. I think they're solid. And I would argue that they're probably even a little bit underrated when looking at the rest of the teams in the Big 12. But do they have enough big play potential? to take advantage of a secondary that has had some moments this year that you would like to forget. 
Quinn Ewers and company without Jonathan Brooks, I will also be interested to see, is there a drop-off there offensively for the Longhorns? Jonathan Brooks has been the bell cow. He's been the guy that's really uplifted this offense since he was inserted in the lineup in week three. C.J. Baxter's a talented guy, a really talented guy, and earned the start opening day because he beat out Jonathan Brooks in camp. So he's very talented. So at least they have depth at the position. But I might miss Brooks a little bit in a game like this. It's going to be hard to run the ball for the most part against Iowa State. I think it's going to be hard to manufacture big plays against Iowa State. What does Sark do a great job of? Hitting big plays off play action. Creating favorable matchups in the secondary. Well, this is a group that wants to keep everything in front of them and rally up and force you to play offense. They're not going to give up the big plays, and they're going to have to be very methodical, and Quinn Ewers is going to have to be really patient in this game as well. I think Texas handles their business, but I would be surprised that this game's not going to come down to the wire. Iowa State is 13-4 and against the spread as a home underdog under Matt Campbell since 2016, and Texas is 1-4 and against the spread in the last five as a favorite. 